Kazakh MPs expressed their dissatisfaction with the progress of the common national testing of school graduates. On Wednesday, several lawmakers addressed their inquiries about violations during the testing to the Education Minister Zhansi Tuymenbaev. Kazakh MPs criticized the Education Minister after learning about the progress of the common national testing of graduates. The lawmakers want to know why exemplary students that did not achieve an ideal score cannot file appeals while the results of the testing are still not announced in southern Kazakhstan. Representatives of local education departments spent a month after the completion of the common national testing visiting Astana and negotiating, and only then informed graduates about the testing results. Parents want the results to be announced on the same day on the website of the Education Ministry. In his defense, the minister says that in comparison with previous years, the performance in 2010 has improved. 25 students out of 60,000 reached the maximum score, although every 11th graduate failed to pass the threshold required for the university admission. What was unexpected is the number of exemplary students that failed to reach the threshold by a point or two. These issues are being solved objectively by appeals committees. Alexander Ivanov says he was preparing for the common national testing for the entire year, but in the end the exams did not meet his expectations. According to the graduate, the CNT does not reflect all knowledge gained in school. Only few people gain passing scores on their own, while most students are helped by the others, use cribs or just lucky. The MPs say that appeals commissions continue to recalculate the test scores of numerous displaced students. The minister assures that every graduate will find justice and every appeal will be reviewed. The common national testing ends on Thursday, June 10th. On June 9th, the Yasil District Court of Astana entered the final stage of the so-called statistician's trial. The process started with the announcement of the criminal case materials. The two former deputy chairmen of the statistics agency Nurman Bayanov and Birlik Mindibayev, as well as the vice president of the commercial and industrial chamber and founder of key company Serik Turjanov, are accused of embezzling public funds during the census campaign. Bayanov's attorney said that the court is currently examines the case materials related to the consideration of budget requests. The investigation found that the amount of the census forms had been overstated. The defense tries to prove the opposite, arguing that given the budget application, the managers of the statistics Statistics agency saved almost three and a half million dollars of the budget means. The prosecutor office tried to draw attention to documents related to the signing of a contract with the company Keek and the subsequent agreement between Keek and Mark Center. In our opinion, these documents are in a civil nature and there is no relation to a criminal investigation. Meanwhile, Kazakh traders refused to buy shares of the Alliance Bank made available on Tuesday. Brokers are concerned about the way the bank dealt with its former minority shareholders, who are currently suing the Financial Institution, Financial Control Agency and National Fund Samru Kazana. One ordinary share costs $306 at the stock exchange, but a preference share is priced $60 higher. The former minority shareholder of the Alliance Bank, Ilya Zhezhen, calls the offer overpriced on December 30th. 2009, the Financial Oversight Agency ordered the forced buyout of Zhizhen's stake at the price of $7 for each year. It was just a con. First, the situation was presented as critical so that the bank seemed to have no other choice but to recall shares of minority shareholders. However, less than a half a year later, which is not a significant amount of time, to pass for some major changes, the stock price returned to the previous level. The first hearing on the case of the former minority shareholder began in March, but the defendants, the Financial Control Agency and Fund Samru Kazana appeared in the court only now, while representatives of the main defendant, the Alliance Bank, never showed up in the court at all. Mr. Kabashev had no right to lead any negotiations about my shares, as is covered by the constitutional right for private property. Domestic traders, however, are not rushing to acquire the shares, being confused by current scandals and the history of lost shareholders, which now suggests in courts. Alliance Bank just went through the restructuring and there are many open questions remaining, like the issue with displeased shareholders. Being an investor, I do not need to deal with this. By the end of today's trading session, there were no transactions done with the shares of the Alliance Bank. If in the future there will not be in demand, local experts predict the state to intervene again and purchase national bank securities to make it seem that the bank is doing well. An alternative report on Chevron's activities in Kazakhstan was published by international public organizations. Activists from 16 countries say the corporation's actions and words differ drastically, while the residents of a little-known village Berezovka suffer in the result. 
Chevron Corporation violates the rights of Berezovka village residents in the West Kazakhstan region, says the International Report of Public Organizations compiled by independent environment specialists from 16 countries. The conclusion was made on the base of the $21 million fine imposed on Karachaganak Petroleum operating this spring and two infamous criminal cases instigated against the company due to the illegal extraction of oil and gas in 2008, as well as the inflation of expenses. The villagers are suing the government for already eight years, taking Chevron to fund their resettlement from the oil field area. In April 2010, a field trial presided by Judge Ajan Babishov was held in Birozovka to clarify the situation. You all live here and all you want to move? Yes or no? Environment specialists say that the villagers are subjected to the cost of poisoning. Independent expertise showed that more than 25 toxic substances are present in the local air at any given time. Even with these facts, the judge has yet to make a decision. The situation is really serious and local residents cannot live there anymore as it affects the health condition in various ways. The transnational corporation Chevron extracts up to 20 percent oil in Kazakhstan. Environment specialists believe the company should bear social responsibility not only before the state and owned workers, but also before the region's residents. Chevron, however, gives no comments on the global report or the company's policies towards the village Berezovka. A forum on Afghan drug production is currently underway in Moscow. Representatives of NATO, UN, OSCE and other major international organizations, as well as heads of anti-drug agencies from different countries, met to jointly develop a strategy to fight the major drug problem. The production of Afghan drugs will be viewed by the UN Security Council as a threat to international peace and security. The chairman of the Russian anti-drug committee, Viktor Ivanov, noted in his welcoming speech that the issue of Afghan drug production has never been discussed by so many influential people. The officials' colleagues from Italy, U.S., Kazakhstan, Tajikistan and many other countries, as well as representatives of major international organizations, including NATO, UN and CSTO, were present in Moscow on Tuesday. The time has come to qualify the status of Afghan drug production as a threat to international peace and security. And this is the key proposal of Russia's action plan voiced in NATO's headquarters in the European Parliament. Moscow was chosen as the host of the forum because the lion's share of drugs from Afghanistan ends up in Russia. According to the UN reports, every year Afghan heroin kills up to 100,000 people worldwide. The forum's participants admit that their mere destruction of crop is not an effective enough measure. Common efforts are needed to create conditions for the development of Afghanistan's agriculture and infrastructure so that peaceful crops will eventually replace poppy fields. We must fight not only drug trafficking but also social factors that it produces, including poverty, inequality and corruption. We are fully aware that the internal resources of Afghanistan are not enough to win this fight. Dmitry Medvedev said that on the day of the forum's opening, he approved the all-Russian anti-drug strategy until 2020. A similar document exists in Kazakhstan, although with a shorter term. According to the chairman of the anti-drug committee, Janat Suleymenov, Kazakhstan has yet to resolve the problem of transit and domestic drug production. Local officials are also interested in the consolidation of efforts, a common theme heard throughout the forum. The responsibility for coming up with a common policy should lie on the world community as a whole, not individual states, no matter how powerful they are and what resources they possess. It is clear that Afghanistan, Russia or the United States will not be able to cope with the problem on their own, and this is a collective task. At the same time, the anti-drug campaign should be depoliticized. The forum participants have yet to calculate the cost of this anti-drug campaign. But the fact that international organizations and anti-drug agencies now intend to coordinate their actions and spending should help reducing the production of drugs, say experts. These were all the latest updates from Kazakhstan. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.